Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We're going we're to uh, get into some things today. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go to the first uh, book that we're going to cover. And let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're living... We might have to change that one, all right? Just hold on. Let's hold you. Just keep going. Go to 1 Thessalonians 5 first. And hold your place here and run over to 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Glory to God. How many love Jesus? Oh, we thank God for his word. We thank God for the Holy Ghost. We thank God for all the goodness and mercy of God. I'm thanking God that we're walking in a, in, a, in a life where we're walking in a whole new plane altogether, amen. We're walking in the realm of the Spirit, praise God, amen. amen. Hallelujah. And because we're walking there, there are things required of us. Now, not that God didn't, doesn't like you, but we're supposed to walk in a different way. Can you say, I'm supposed to walk in a different way? You know, Paul encouraged the church in one place and said, put off the old man and put on the new man, which is created in righteousness and holiness. H-O-L-I-N-E-S-S. -E -S. It is not a cuss word. Are you here? I mean, I could probably get Siri to tell you what it is. Well, I discovered, I got, I, had, I discovered Siri does all kinds of stuff. You can tell Siri, what's the temperature? And she'll say, the temperature is 61 degrees. Like, Thank you, Siri. What's the Oakland Athletic score? And she'll tell me what the score. I like that. I mean, I'm like, text now, now that I got, I got a newer, newer phone, and I, I just say, Siri. Text Nathan, what would you like me to say? I was like, Praise all. Well, this is great. I can text and drive and not actually you can do it. I can do it by voice. Hallelujah. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Stop there. Now to me, this sounds like that there's some stuff going to happen that the Holy Ghost didn't want you to be stupid about. Hello? He made it very clear. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times. Now, folks, where do you think we're living? Hello? If they thought they were living in the latter times 2,000 years ago, what do you think we is? The latter of the latter times. Come on now. The Spirit speaketh expressly <coughs> that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith Oh, people just going, if you just get, just, you're in the grace, you'll, you'll serve the Lord automatically. The Holy Ghost didn't say that. As a matter of fact, he said expressly, there will be people who depart from the faith. Hello. Giving heed, here's why. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry. Commanding to abstain from meats. Which God created to receive with thanksgiving of them. All these people run around, you know, don't kill the animals. You know, all that kind of stuff. See, they're not of God. Yeah. For every creature is good. If it be received, um, if it, if nothing to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. For it's sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put... Brethren, I tell you, the church, the pastors ought to be doing their job. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister. See, we want to tell everybody, oh, we want to tickle everybody's ears and make them feel hunkadory. And the Bible says, let them know that in the last days, people are going to depart from the faith, seducing spirits and doctors and devils are going to come, and you're supposed to be aware of it. Yeah. And if you do that, pastors, you'll be a good minister, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. Go over now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 6, this is leading us into our, what we're going to be sharing this morning. But I just want you to know that the Bible tells us the Holy Ghost spoke with an express purpose to warn the church that there are times coming on the earth that we need to be aware and watchful of and because there's seducing spirits and doctrines of the devils and their purpose is to cause you to depart from the faith. That is their job. That is what they're after. 
<clears throat> we've got this idea that's been, and it's really not, a, it's not a godly mantra. It's a mantra that's been brought into the church. If we just make everybody feel good, then they'll serve God. No. If you serve God the way you're supposed to, you'll feel good. Not make you feel good so you'll serve God. Serving God the way you're supposed to. Now, I understand this. You may go through some tough places, but in the end, you're going to come out victorious, and you'll feel good. But it's not about making you feel good. We can't not compromise everything. We can't not ever <clears throat> share on, you know, what sin is. We can't stop from saying that this is wrong. We can't, you know, not correct error because it might make you feel bad. See, that's what I'm talking about. The mantra that we can't ever deal with things because it'll make people feel bad is wrong. And we said this in the past week, the Bible says that the Lord chastens those whom he loves, and if he chastens us not, then we're bastards. Amen. I can't believe you said that in church, but the Bible says it, so I said it in church. It means you're illegitimate. If the Lord does not correct you, who's going to? Now, I hold that rather the Lord correct me than to judge me. I'd rather be corrected and get it straight than to end up having to stand before the Lord and be judged according to my works. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you, can you say amen? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6 says this. There, we'll back up one verse. It says, Ye are children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, stop. One guy one time said this. He said, Whatever you see the word therefore, see what it's there for. We are not children of the darkness. We are not children of the night. We are children of the day and children of the light. Therefore, so he's talking to who? If we're the children of the light, we're the children of the day, he's talking to the church. Amen. Can you say amen? Therefore, let us not sleep. Oh, come on now. As do others, but let us watch and be sober. I know that there is a place for rejoicing and having fun and serving God with joy. Let us serve him with gladness. But you cannot put all the emphasis on that. I know that we're supposed to be full, you know, we're to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. But we cannot make it a party. The joy should be an inner working and not an outward stimulation. See, we stimulate people by saying, you're okay, I'm okay, let's sing the Barney song. Now we all feel good. Kumbaya, my Lord, we all feel good. Instead of addressing and changing and being sober and watching things and taking care of internal business, glory to God, so that we're walking with God in harmony with him. And there's a joy that comes from the inner man that you cannot supplant or replace with outward stimulation. One church said they start all their services with a rock song. Other churches, when y'all ever talk about, they can drink wine. They go out and have beer after church. <clears throat> churches are having stogie parties and beer parties for the men's fellowships. You know, and all getting together. It's, what are, they're trying to do from the outside in what only can be accomplished from the inside out. And that is a working of the Holy Ghost. That is a walking in the Spirit. I am telling you, there is no alcoholic content. There is no stogie. There is nothing you can do from the outside that will replace what the Spirit of God can do on the inside when that greater one rises up and fills you with the joy that comes out of heaven. My God. And he says here, be sober. Watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God's not appointing us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so even in our walk with the Lord, even in our place with God, even in when we're... we're, we're um, uh, uh, working to obtain that joy that we look for and then walking in that joy. You know, when the Lord turned the kid into captivity as I am, they were like them that dream. Then my mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Psalm 126. Even in that, there's to be a sobriety to us. What do you mean by being, having a sobriety or being sober? Not getting silly. Not get it flippant about the things of God. 
But understanding, even in that place of joy, we're to, we're to conduct and to keep ourselves in a way, a chaste way that honors and pleases God. And we just don't run around and just do stupid stuff and get under the guise of grace or get under the guise, and I'm talking about extreme crazy grace, or some people call it greasy grace, some call it pseudo grace, some call it fake grace. You know, there is a Bible grace. That's what we need to walk in. But there's to be a sobriety. In other words, there's a settledness about us that we understand where this is coming from. He says here, um, over in Matthew, I'm sorry, Mark 13, 37, Jesus said, I say unto you, watch. Mark 14, 38, watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, watch ye, stand fast in faith, quit ye like men, be strong. For Colossians 4, 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 1 uh, Timothy, or 2 Timothy 4, 5, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. 1 Peter 7, I mean 4, 7, but, unto the, but, the, end of all thing, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. I honestly believe that some of the stuff we're doing in the church where we're just being, you know, it's, it's about having fun and just coming in and it's all about us having fun. It's sending the wrong message to the world. Hello. The world needs to see people who walk with God. Well, that joy I got, you know, I understand there's a balance to it. We don't want to go, we don't want to go down one ditch into the other. We don't walk around like we've been baptized in vinegar and lemon juice. Hello. That's not sobriety. But there should be a seriousness about our walk with God. God's not your sugar daddy. I am telling you, God, I'm telling you, he is the God of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. He reigns in glory and honor. Even the angels who fly, the seraphims who fly around the throne, they got six wings. They cover their feet with two, they cover their face with two, and they fly with the other two. And all they can do is cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Well, that's the angels. We're, we're new created beings. You're in Christ Jesus. But we do not treat the Father with flippancy or dishonor just because we're born again. He's holy. I said he's holy. So there should be a seriousness. And what we're to watch, we're to be aware, we're to be, walk, we're to be looking about and, 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 and guarding ourselves. Hallelujah. So we have an acronym for the word watch. All right? Watch your words, watch your actions, watch your thoughts, watch your company, and watch your heart. Watch your words. Let the words of Psalm 19, 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, one bozo preacher said recently, and I just can't help but say it, if we could just do away with the Old Testament, everything would be all right. If we, basically, if we can get people to stop reading the Old Testament. And, you know, that's funny because Hebrews said that the things that were written about Israel were given to us as examples. It's amazing the writer of Hebrews knew more than the, than the current modern preachers. Hello? Now, the psalmist said, you know, Dave, this was the song book of Israel. And David wrote, said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. There's stuff that people are doing and saying today they just shouldn't be saying and doing. I mean, that's just not, even just, not even just negative confessions, not even saying the wrong thing, you know, making the wrong confession. That's one side. That's a whole side of it we cover all the time. But you know what? You need to watch what you say. We got cussing Christians now. We got drinking Christians and cussing Christians. Now, one guy used to do it. He used to get in the pulpit and cuss just to get a reaction out of the people. I'm sorry, but there is a decorum about the things of God. And I never saw Jesus cuss to get anybody's attention. Hello? Well, you got to understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to break. It is not your cussing that's going to break somebody's bondages. 
It is the anointing of God. And listen, church, we, we need to watch what we say. I remember, I take the thought, you know, Peter, when, uh, <coughs> when <coughs> excuse me, Peter, when Peter was, you know, being the, uh, around the fire and they were questioning Jesus and they kept coming up to say, you're one of them. He said, no, I'm not. You know, and they kept you know, bugging him and stuff. And finally, one of them said this, your speech betrays you. He hung around Jesus so much, he changed the way he talked. Then that's when he started cussing. So he could sound like the world. And they wouldn't think he had been with Jesus because he didn't want to get tried. He was a, don't be a chick, chick, chicken like Peter was for he who lied and denied the Lord who died upon Mount Calvary. So <laughs> was a chick, chick, chicken. That's in the Mother Goose videos from years ago, all right? <laughs> the Christian Mother Goose. Huh? Oh, the Wiser Family Puppets. That's what it was. Wiser Family Puppets. Sorry, messed up my videos. I watched these things so much, I was like. Yeah, Peter was a chicken. But his speech, I am telling you, when you hang out with the Lord, you talk different. And it is not wrong to talk different. It is not wrong to come out of the presence of God and have a different way of saying stuff. The world is not looking for cussing preachers. Oh, they'll go get some guy, and they'll, they'll, prompt, they'll put it on the newspaper. You know, they, they brought all the homosexuals in, and they're, just, you know, and, and they're all part of their church, and everybody's just happy. Or they're all the cussers are all in there. You know, and everybody's happy. I'm telling you, people, the Bible tells we need to watch our mouth. The Bible says that our words be seasoned with grace. Amen? Our words should be different. The way we talk should be different. Why? Because I don't believe God talks the way the world talks. Now, he might be able to talk jive, but he don't cuss in jive. Hello? I remember Kim Ben Kinchler said, number years, God talks jive. Yeah, he talks jive, but he don't cuss in it. He doesn't talk dirty in it. Are y'all here? See, the presence of God should bring a change. We need to watch what we say. You're a representative of Jesus Christ. You're an ambassador for Christ. Yeah, Jesus ate with the publicans and sinners, but he didn't do what the publicans and sinners did. Well, you got, you know, you got to get just like them. You got to look just like them. You got to act just like them to win them. No, what they're doing what they're doing because of where they are. We need to come in with words of life. I, I heard, I heard uh, Gloria Copeland said a number of years ago, you just need to talk around people like they believe just like you believe. Instead of talking like they talk, getting them to try to believe like you believe. Now, how are you going to get them to change if you're talking just like them? You don't need to tell people, I'll pray for you and do like the world does. You know, well, forget about it. I just said it because it makes you feel better. I had a friend on Facebook the other day, a high school friend, and she was going through a tough place. You know, but praying, you know, people going praying for you, praying for you. And that, that's fine. But I, I just went out for I Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm declaring Ephesians chapter 1, verses 14 through 19 over you right now in Jesus' name. She wrote back and said, I felt lighter after reading those scriptures. See, she needed worse. She didn't need somebody to say, I'm praying for you. Amen. You know, that, I mean, we feel better. We, you know, we mentally it makes us, oh, people are praying for me. But what are they praying? Give them, the, it needs to be the word. We need to be word-based. We need to speak life. We need to have life coming out of us. And, our, and, and the words that we speak should be birthed out of the things of God and not out of trying to be like the world. Can you say amen? And should be birthed out of you're no longer like the world. Amen? Set, Psalm 141, 3. Set a watch, O Lord, upon my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Wow. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 37, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Come on now. James 1, 22, But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So our words need to be watched. Yes, words of negative confession, speaking against the things of God, but also how we speak in life. Our words need to be different. 
Amen. I said amen. The vocabulary needs to be different. You can't talk like the world. You can't be dropping F-bombs all over the place. And then say, I love the Lord. You don't have a testimony. I mean, you might get some dice high, on, high as a kite on something going, man, that's cool. You love, you're saved. You, start, you talk like that. That's cool. They might think, wow, you're talking about an unrenewed mind telling you that. You're talking about somebody who's not born again telling you that. You're talking about somebody who's operating in the spirit of the world, which whose wisdom is earthly, sensual, and devilish telling you that. You can't go by what they say. Amen. The world's opinion is not our standard for what we say. God is. So we've got to put a watch over our mouth. Amen? Watch over our words. Secondly, you need to have a watch over your actions. Amen. Talking about Jesus in Luke 23, remember that he was brought in, being, they, were, they were trying to try him, and um, it says, and we indeed justly, for we, we you know, as we receive the recompense of our rewards, we indeed justly, but we receive the due reward for our deeds, but this man does nothing wrong. Remember on the cross, he said this, <clears throat> we, we, and one of, the, one of the guys on the cross said, look, we, we're getting what we deserve. He's done nothing wrong. Words, his actions were his testimony. Your life is a testimony to people around you. Now, I found we keep finding out something about our neighborhood. Everybody knows I'm the preacher. And I don't go tell anybody. Me start talking to people. Oh, you live, you, live, you live where? I live in the White House. Oh, you're the preacher. How'd you know that? I was talking with... Uh, I don't know how come, so for some reason, we were right around the neighborhood a couple of months ago, and for some reason, we stopped. There was a couple, some guys that were talking to, and so forth, and, and, uh, and he started talking. He's running for sheriff or something, winning our vote. And I said, well, you know, send me your stuff. I'll, I'll consider it, you know. And uh, he, he says, now, where do you live? I said, I live over in the White House. He said, oh, you're the preacher. I, this is the first time I met you. When our neighbor died of a heart attack in the floor, and we went over and we, listen, he had treated us pretty rot rotten. I mean, he just, he just wrote our case. I mean, it, you know, my kids couldn't go in his yard because it would bruise his grass. And, I mean, you know, it it bruise his grass, yeah. Uh, we tried to put our playhouse up. He came over and told me I couldn't put it up. He was on the architectural committee, you know. And, um, I mean, he, you know, tried to get us not to buy the house because it came up to us everything in the world. You know, you're going to run into my air conditioner, backing out of your garage, and didn't build it right. Well, somebody's going to live there, and they're going to do it. You know, just on and on and on and on and on. Just, just rode us, hurt, rode hurt on us. But, you know, we just, <laughs> anyway, uh, he, 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 we rescued Squad. I went over to the house. He was on the floor. He'd been dead for several hours. And, um, you know, Janie, Janie just took his wife to the hospital, stayed with her, and, and then brought her home. We, we organized food for them, the people in the neighborhood to bring food over to them and all this kind of stuff. And it got out. Because people knew how you treated us. But it got out how we responded when he died, even though we had been treated so badly. And people would tell us, you know, you know, well, you know, I, I, you're, I had it's things like I have respect for you, you know, what you did after they treated you. Listen, your actions are a testimony. People are watching. So we need to watch our actions. Now, this is why, you know, we say things like, uh, you're going out and you're drinking wine and then you come to church and there's a drunk who walks in needing Jesus and they just saw you out at some bar the last week. You know, saw you out at the bar with your after church men's group drinking a beer and you know, having a good time and here they come and they're bound by alcohol. How are you going to get them set free? How are you going to minister to them? Because they see you as a what? Hypocrite. Our ags... <laughs> Our actions. <laughs> Hallelujah. John 3, 19, this is the condemnation. The light came into the world. Men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Romans 6, 2, God, the word of God says, God will, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Um, <clears throat> Romans 8, for if we live after the flesh, you'll die. But if you live through the spirit, through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. You've got to control your actions. He had to live a right way. Paul, Paul wrote to the church at Rome and said in the 12th chapter, he says, I beseech you, I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your body a living sacrifice. 
unto God, which is your spiritual service, should be translated. King James says spiritual, which is your, which is your, I mean, King James says reasonable, should be translated spiritual service. Why have you got to offer the living sacrifice? Because that rascal will get off the cross and go do stuff. And you just got to keep it under. You got to keep it sacrificed. Come on now. Are you here? You're going home. If we do not keep our bodies under, if we do not control our bodies, but if you live after the flesh, you will die. So our actions were to watch. We're to, we're to take note of what we're doing. Now somebody will come along and they'll tell you, they'll go, it doesn't matter what you do, you're under grace. And their, their argument is this, you'll still go to heaven if you do that, and you might. The reason I say might, because if you keep living a certain way, you're going to put yourself in a position that you're going to walk away from the things of God. And when you trot underfoot the blood of the Son of God and count the, the, the blood wherewith you were sanctified an unholy thing, there remaineth no more sacrifice for you. I'll say, does that mean I'm, I wouldn't even want to find out? Why, why go there? Why are people trying to find out a way to get there? Well, I can win more people if I look like them and act like them. Really? Really? Jesus didn't act like the sinners and he didn't look like the sinners. As a matter of fact, he walked in another place. He walked in the anointing. You see, we've put more reliance on imitating the people when the Bible says to be imitators of God as dear children. When Jesus came, he didn't come to be like them. He wasn't fornicating, and he wasn't drinking and, and, and getting drunk, and he wasn't robbing banks, and he wasn't doing all this kind of stuff. What was he doing? He was bringing life. That's right, they called him rabbi because he was dressed like a rabbi. He wore rabbinical clothing. Jess over here doing my follow-up for me. Praise God. He looked like a preacher. Go on, brother. Looked like a preacher of their day. He didn't look like them. But they came by the droves to follow him. Think about the ministry of John the Baptist. He didn't look like them either. As a matter of fact, he looked like a crazy man. Are you here? And they followed him. We get, we've got to get rid of the world's mantra of how the church should be to reach the world. The world says, this is what you've got to reach me. And what they're really doing is they're bringing the church into a box where it says, the church has to do this so I feel okay. When the message of the church is to repent. So our actions should be representative of the kingdom of God. Amen. That means there's some things you're not going to do as ambassadors for Christ. There are ways you're going to conduct yourself as ambassadors for Christ. There are, there are ways that you're going to walk, with the world, walk in the world but not be of the world. We're in the world. We're not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. We should be affecting the world, not it affecting us. Hello? My little children love not in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Look at Revelation 22. This is, this is interesting. Yeah, Revelation 22. Jesus is coming back. Everybody say, Jesus is coming back. As Andre Crouch used to sing, soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Ba -ba 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 -boom. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. No more crying there. We, oh, sorry, we've got to stop. I'm going to have my own worship service here. All by myself. <laughs> Verse 11 of, Hebrew, of Revelation 22. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. 
He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. And I, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Now, Jesus, the head of the church, just knocked the stupid stuff right out of the ballpark. He said, if you're going to be filthy, stay filthy. If you're going to be unjust, stay unjust. If you're going to be righteous, stay righteous. If you're going to be holy, stay holy. In other words, would, just keep, go ahead, because I'm coming. I, 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 got more of a, I got more of this as not a, you know, just, just, just live there. It's okay. It's a, go ahead. You're going to be dumb. You've got to be tough. I'm coming. My reward's with me, and I'm going to reward you according to how you act. Amen. Well. We need to watch how we act. Jesus said this. He's coming. Pastors, if you think you can be out with the secretary having yourself a little sling on the slide and get away with it, he's coming. I believe we've got too many ministers in adultery because they don't fear the Lord anymore. Got too many in the congregational seats and living in sin and adultery and fornication because they don't fear the Lord anymore because they think that they're going to go to heaven no matter what. He said, I'm coming. My reward's in my hand. You better watch your actions. Amen. This isn't to make you feel bad. This is a wake-up call. Be sober. Amen. Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walketh up. This is why we're to be sober. Walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to get you to a place where he can call you out and devour you. And people being called out going, I'm under grace. And getting eat. And, and, and the lion doesn't even bother to say grace while he's eating. <laughs> Just chomping down. No, the Lord said, if you're going to be just, stay that way. If you're going to be filthy, stay that way. If you're going to be righteous, stay that way. Holy, stay that way. Because I'm coming. And I'm going to reward you. You're making it worse. No, I'm not. Jesus said, the, the word of God tells us without holiness, no man should see the Lord. We got to look at holiness, your actions. No, I'm not talking about the Pentecost, the beehive hairdo, and the burlap sack, and the no makeup. I grew up that way. I understand that. But your lifestyle should be a holy lifestyle. Hello? I told somebody, man, I said it Wednesday night. You know, people talk about how, you know, under, under the New Testament, everything's so great, so wonderful. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to tithe. We don't have to give. We don't have to go to church. You know, because we've got grace, basically we're going to heaven no matter what. And yet Jesus came and said, man, I'm telling you what the Bible says, you know, the Word says, the Old Testament, the law says, y'all shall not commit adultery. He said, but I say, if you look at the woman and think about it, you've already done it. He didn't lower the bar. He raised it. He made it tougher, not easier. Come on. What's this mean? We as believers are supposed to be what? Sober. That don't mean you got to walk around like a, a, a monk and chant all the time. Um, not talking about that. You know, sing John Michael Talbot songs all the time. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever. You know, we have to, you know, or get into the, oh, the Lord is good. You know, I'm not talking about that. I'm not trying to get you, you know, you're weird. Like a Jedi Knight for Jesus. We're talking about being serious. The things of God are not a plaything. And, and, and I know it's a bad word to say the things of God. But I, I don't know if we're better, I can't really think of a really good word right now to, to talk about God's manifestations and God's dealings and God's workings. The aspects of God. His dealings, his workings. We're going to be serious about those things and not flippant. And when his word says, watch, be aware, be vigilant, then what are we supposed to do? Watch. And we're to watch our actions. We want to make sure our actions aren't displeasing to him or a reproach on his kingdom. Well, I'm free to do whatever I want to do. See, people say come up with all kinds of stuff. It's because you just don't really read your Bible like you should. And you listen to somebody else who didn't know what they were talking about. 
we need to be aware of our actions. Can you say amen? amen. And how they affect others. Paul said, this might be legal to me, but if it offends my brother, I'm not going to do it. That's what he said. Well, I'm free. Hello. Come on now. All right. What time is it? It's time for five more minutes. Can I get five over here? Can I get five over there? Can I, only one. I got to 10 now. 15. Can I get 20. All right, I got 20. I got 25. Carrie was out. Well, she, I can take it as a raised hand. She scratched her eye. I was trying not to be like raising her hand, but I take it anyway. Next, watch your thoughts. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Psalm 1, 1 and 2, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Let me tell you something. You can be a Christian and be ungodly. If your counsel is not godly counsel, it's ungodly counsel. Why? Because the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. And if you're given your opinion that doesn't line up with the word of God, if you're given your opinion that you just think, well, I just think. I don't care what you just think. That's not godly counsel what you just think. What does the word of God have to say about it? Well, I experience, I don't care what you experience, and I don't mean that in, a, in an unkind way, but your experience is not a, um, an, a, an authority for godly counsel. Because your experience can be, could have happened for all kinds of reasons, like bad decisions. And you walk in ungodly counsel. That doesn't make your counsel now godly, just because you walked in ungodly counsel and come out with an idea and you think. Hello? I said, hello? No, godly counsel is what the Word of God says, and even if it goes crossways to your experience, your experience is not where we get our counsel from. Unless your experience was based in what the Word said, and you got Word results. Amen. You know? Well, I, I just think this, and I just think that. No, 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 no. We're to walk in the counsel of the, of, of the godly. We're not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. I mean, here, here's a really interesting scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. Well, how are we going to take heed what? Take heed to what the word says. So you might think you're all right. We are living in a time where nobody wants to be do, 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 nobody wants to de, help that. <laughs> nobody wants to do, D-O, do, D-U-E, diligence. People do not want to take the time to give due diligence to what the word says. They just want somebody to tell them what they, their opinion of it, and they're going to go out there and live that way. And think they're okay. You can think you're going to stand, but you take heed lest you fall. The only thing, what is it that keeps us from falling in the storms of life? He that heareth these sayings of my, see what you think, and doeth them. I will liken him unto a man who went and dig deep and built his house on the rock. And the storm came, and the winds blew, and the stream did beat vehemently upon it. But it stood. And he that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, I'll like him unto the man who went and did, he built his house on the sand. And the winds came, and the storm blew, and the uh, streams beat vehemently upon it, and great was the fall of it. See? You can build your house on the sand, and it can look just like the house built on the rock from the outside. And as long as there's no storms, nobody knows the better. But when the storm shows up, and this is what really, this is, this is something as a pastor and as a minister of Jesus Christ that irks me to no end, is people out there under the guise of ministry are telling people how to build their house on the sand and make it look really good and get the money and run to the bank and they're long gone when the storm shows up. 
and their house falls. But it's too late. They're like the bad carpenter who came in and did a lot of cosmetic work, but then the house shorts out and cooks because they left all the electric. I mean, you ever, anybody watch Homes? Like, home, you know, Homes makes it right, or Homes on Homes, and, you know, on, on one of the do-it-yourself channels. You know, Mike Holmes does all that work. He goes, went into one house not that long ago, and some guy was doing a, re- a, a, a reno for the people, and went in there, and they had junction boxes behind the sheetrock. You know what a junction box behind the sheetrock is? Big no-no. All over the place. Bad wire just behind the sheetrock. No, you, you can't have junction boxes in a wall. You could use your receptacle as a junction box, but you can't have a junction box hidden. See, it looks good until it catches on fire. Are you here? See, a lot of stuff can be covered up and look good. But I'm telling you, the Word of God tells us to take heed what we know. We're to watch what we think. Amen. And our thoughts will be governed by the Word of God. And we're to, you know, Romans 12, Paul, remember we said this, beseech your brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God with your spiritual service. Next verse, be not conformed to this world. Don't be shaped, fashioned, molded. Don't get put into a little jello mold. Come out looking like a little jello character. But be you transformed. Have a metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind. But you can prove was that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. What we think matters, and it needs to be in line with the Word of God. I know not, we're not preaching a shout one like we did the past couple weeks. This is good stuff. This is good stuff, though. What did I say? Good, do, good stuff? Yeah, that's good stuff and dough. Put together. Anyway, forget it. It's good stuff. See, when we watch what we think, what do you mean watch what we think? I keep saying watch. You take account of your words, you take account of your actions, you take account of your thoughts, and you measure them against what the Bible says, not what Joe says, not what Jimmy says, not what preacher so-and-so says, not even what I say. I heard Dad Hagen say, don't, don't go out there and say, Brother Hagen said this. He said, you go to the Bible, you find out for yourself, make it your word. You act on it because you studied it out. Don't you tell anybody that I'm doing this because Brother Hagin said do it. He said, you do it because you found out. He said, make it your word. You act on it. Make it your word because you act on it and find it in the Bible for yourself. Don't just say, Brother Hagin said this. That, well, that won't get you anything. That and $4.50 get you a venti cappuccino at Starbucks without the drizzle or the tall or the whatever size they are. Are you here? We have to take account of our thoughts. Paul wrote to the church at Corinth and said that we're to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen? Every thought. This and disobedience to Jesus Christ. We need to bring it into captivity. Why? Because those thoughts become seeds. Those seeds become planted in our heart. Are you here? And they grow. They produce. Are you here? Men don't, listen, you don't wake up one day and go, I can't stop myself. I got to go sin. No, you woke up after days of thinking about something and not doing anything about it. Of not bringing it into captivity. Of not governing it. And it rose up and slew you. Are you here? And, dr- and, 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 and drug you into defeat. And you can just think that you're not going to have anything happen like that no matter what, brother or sister. Paul wrote in the second, 10th chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians and said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Casting down imaginations. Where do those take place? In your mind. In every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. How are you going to know if it's exalting itself against the knowledge of God unless you go to God's word and find out what his knowledge is? 
Amen? And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That means every thought has to be subjugated to the authority of the head of the church. Well, I just think, did you subject it to the authority of the church, the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ? If you didn't, then you don't have a right to go repeat it and tell other people that this is what this means. If you haven't subjected it to the authority of the head of the church, and if you do, if it's goofy, he'll tell you it's goofy. Hello? That went over big. And having an readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do, do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he's in, he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that is, he is Christ, and so we are Christ. And what are you saying? We can't judge things. We can't just sit around and look on the outside and make our decision. We have to look to Jesus. It has to be subjected to Jesus. We have to measure it against Jesus. <coughs> Amen. And if it don't measure up, we got to get rid of it. Your thoughts. Now, let's, let, me, let me just go ahead and say this. Isaiah 55 makes it very clear. Your thoughts aren't his. And your ways aren't his. Meaning, you have to subject yours to his. Well, I just think. Well, what does the Bible say about it? Well, I don't know. I just think. Crazy glue your mouth. Until you can say what he says about it, you don't need to say anything. Why? Because somebody might listen to you and go and act on your dumbness. Well, my opinion. I, we don't, we, you can't give people what your opinion is. You have to give them what the Bible says. You may have an opinion about something, but it's got to be biblical. And it can't just be covered with love. <clears throat> the, the, the scriptures on love are not a catch-all for all your opinions about everything in life. I don't make anybody feel bad, so I just love them, tell them that God loves them, you know, and just, it's okay how they're living. Really? Jesus said, go tell them to repent. That was love. Love demanded their repentance. Why? Because where they were living was going to take them to hell. We've got to change the way we think. We've got to think like God. And when we talk, our words should be seasoned with grace. They should be anointed. They should have life. What do you mean life? Yes, you're all together lost in your sin. You're on your way to hell. But I've got good news. Here's the good news. The good news is not you're going to heaven no matter what. The good news is you are destined for hell, but Jesus Christ came to make a way not to go there. Amen. And if you'll do this, you don't have to go there. You're sick. It's not that you're not sick. It's that Jesus carried your sickness. If you're, if you're financially strapped, the, bad, the good news is not it's okay, you're going to have millions of dollars no matter what. It is, he's made a way out of poverty if you walk his ways. Not that you just lay around out like a bozo and you're going to get it anyway. See, we've got, to, we've got to come to the place that out of our innermost being, not our heads, not out of philosophical gooby de and, 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 and rabble, That Jesus Christ speaks through us as the oracles of God. And the words that come out of us have the yoke-destroying, burden-roofed power of God vested in them. And you've got to be able to think differently. In other words, your thoughts have to come out of spending time with him and spending time in his word and having a renewed mind. And now you think in line with him. And that dumb stuff you would give your opinion about no longer comes out. That's harsh. No, it's, it's truth. It's truth. Just because you say it don't make it right. There's only one place we can go that it's always right. The Word of God. And you don't even have a 50-50 chance if you're just doing it without the Word of God. Pretty much like a 99 against and a 1% for, you're going to get it right if you're not in the Word. Why? Because you're going to minister out of your emotions and out of your experience and out of your flesh and not out of the Word. 
And if we'll get to where the Word of God's renewing our mind and we're, we're spending time with the Lord, your thoughts process will change. But you've got to have a transformation. And this one thing I do, Paul, Paul said this, people listen, I am telling you, but I got past experiences. I had this happen in my life and that happened in my life and it shaped me and molded me. The Apostle Paul came and said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Can I say something? It's going to be pretty, we might, you might consider it harsh, but it's still truth. Whatever happened to you when you were younger, I mean, you know, all kinds of things happen. People get molested, people get raped, people get, uh, you know, uh, injured, they get hurt. Things happen from <coughs> ungodly people. They might call themselves Christians, but they're not Christians. They were ungodly. You cannot live your life out of the experience of your past. You will fail. But if you will live your life like the Apostle Paul and come to Jesus Christ and be born again, and if you've been born again, now begin to live out of the newness of life, that whole new plane together, he says over in Romans chapter 6, out of, out of, out of, out of Philip's. You know, you live in a whole new plane all together. Out of that place where you can forget those things which are behind how do I do that? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Have a metamorphosis in your mind. It goes from the carnal, defeated mind to the mind of who? If known the mind of the Lord, who can search out his ways? Paul goes on in there and says, but we have the mind of Christ. That transformed metamorph metamorphosis mind becomes the mind of Christ. It thinks like the anointed one. And out of that comes words out of our being that are anointed to destroy yokes and remove burdens. We got this idea that you got to be a prostitute to minister to prostitutes. No, you got to be anointed. I can tell you, I think the church has lost something. We, we, we could get to the place where just like in the Bible, Peter, they just put people out in the street and a shadow fell on them and they got healed. Jesus said, I'm he, and they went back and fell down. Throughout the Bible, when the glory was manifest, this, which is the anointing, people would fall on their face. One place stood some guy up. He got down on his face before he saw the glory coming, and the power of God hit him and stood him up. Humanity is not looking for a psychological answer. They're looking for something that will destroy the yoke and remove the burden. And we ourselves have to get there by renewing our mind, watching our thoughts, keeping under the obedience of Christ. And when we have a thought that doesn't line up with Jesus, get rid of it. That's hard. Yeah, it's hard, but that's why you're told to do it. His grace is sufficient for you. For in your weakness, the strength of God empowers you to carry out what God tells you to do. Empowers you. Doesn't do it for you, but it empowers you. In the one place that we find God doing something for us, the Spirit himself helpeth our weaknesses. Takes hold together with against our weakness. Doesn't do it for us. He helps us. Amen. Remember that? With groanings that can't be uttered, an articulate speech that goes on and says in the Greek. He helpeth. He takes hold with us against it. He doesn't do it for us. But I can tell you the more you submit yourself and watching your words, watching your actions, watching your thoughts, the more the character and the nature and the power of Christ will be manifest through you to the world. And where before all you could give them is your opinion about something, you have something greater. Remember Peter and, Peter and John went to the gate and the guy was begging alms. They said, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have we're going to give you. In Jesus' name, rise up and walk. Something greater than a natural answer. It was a supernatural answer. 
God didn't have to beg anymore. He could walk. <laughs> Glory to God. And I think he'd take that over begging. Power of God came out of them. And so we need to come back to the place where silver and gold or my opinion I don't have, but what I do have I'll give you, and then give them what the word says and give them what the anointing has for them and see them set free. So we're going to be sober. We're going to be vigilant. We're going to watch our words. We're going to watch our actions. We're going to watch our thoughts. And tonight we're going to watch our company and watch our um, heart. Stand up. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the giving online button thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving